New Buddha Way Dhamma Talks. Jeff Hunt presents a talk on some aspect of the Buddha's teaching. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, compassion uh, again uh, in the Buddha's teaching. This time in a wider, a wider setting. The Buddha, of course, speaks of loving kindness and compassion uh, many times, but he always speaks on the um, the spiritual level. We know that um, loving kindness uh, is the care and supportiveness for others, um, and uh, compassion is an identification with the suffering of others. For the Buddha, uh, loving-kindness and compassion have a solid basis only if they arise directly in conjunction with meditation or insight. Insight, you might say, into the into our human reality. While any degree of love and compassion is of value, an abiding attitude of love and compassion can emerge only from the kind of deep understanding and self-transcending that grow in practicing along the Noble Eightfold Path. Love and compassion are not simply to be adopted or acted out selectively or expressed with a, a passion tainted with craving and rejecting. With insight, meditational insight, there is no choice but love and compassion. With serious practice, there is no choice but meditational insight. The Buddha does not teach a serial order in which insight comes first, however, and then, and then compassion. Uh, that would hardly be wise. It is rather that abiding love and compassion are stable and deep to the extent that insight into our human reality is stable and deep. The Buddha presents loving kindness and compassion together with altruistic joy and equanimity as vital dimensions of awakening. His close follower, Sariputta, expressed this matter exceptionally well when he presented it as two sides of the same coin. That is, awakening through meditational insight and awakening through loving kindness. A follower of the path, he says, quote, abides pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with loving kindness likewise the second, likewise the third, likewise the fourth. So above, below, around and everywhere, and to all as to himself, he abides pervading the all-encompassing world with a mind imbued with loving-kindness, abundant, exalted, immeasurable, without hostility and without ill-will. He abides pervading one quarter with a mind imbued with compassion, and so on. This illumination of the truth of the human condition opened the heart and mind of the Buddha. Your meditational insight too is at the same moment an insight into the suffering associated with dissatisfaction, ignorance and bewilderment. Looked at from the angle of identification with our common suffering, a chain of ignorance is a shackle on our happiness enslaving us through centuries of greed, hatred, fear and pride. This is not a chain that just happens to entangle us from time to time and which we shake off when we can. It is the chain of our fundamental misunderstanding of what we are. It is this misunderstanding that replicates our suffering over and over endlessly through the millennia since human beings emerged as conscious and then self-conscious beings. Shackled in this way, the story of human life is a series of relapses generated and perpetuated by our own failure to understand. Sangsara is the classical word for this. As a closely linked series of relapses, the story must also be one of a faltering growth towards insight and understanding. There can be no expectation of a regular linear progress. For where there is no possibility of relapse, there can be no growth. Every plant growing in your garden can suffer the setbacks of cold, drought, a trampling foot, snails, mould and the beaks of pigeons. And where there is no growth, there can be no possibility of relapse. A rock does not grow, since it is not alive 
and it cannot suffer any relapse, but only dull erosion. So there is always hope, since hope cannot grow anywhere except where there is the possibility and therefore the threat of hopelessness. It is the hope revealed in one shape or form in the teaching of the Buddha, Jesus, Jalaluddin Rumi and other luminaries of the truth of our condition. To become awakened to the chain of ignorance and grasp its enslaving motion is at once to have immense compassion for oneself and what one has needlessly suffered up to that point. It is at once to have the same immense compassion for all human beings, indeed for all sentient beings, shackled in this way wherever and whenever they are. New Buddha way lets go of east and west and starts afresh in the life we have now. For more information, visit www.newbuddhaway.org.